Hello, my name is the NBA Storyteller, and this is one finals moment where some of your favorite NBA YouTubers have come together to celebrate the finals by analyzing one of our favorite NBA Finals moments, each of us individually picking our own and doing whatever the heck we think we need to do with that particular moment and sharing it with you. This project is starting off with just a core group of people, maybe about 10 or so, but as each individual sees this, if you make NBA videos, if you want to take this idea and run with it and make your own and add to the collection, go right ahead, big or small. Enjoy. There is a official playlist over somewhere, and then you can always just search one Finals moment and hopefully all of our videos will pop up. They should be relatively short, five, 10 minutes, nothing crazy. And again, if you like this idea, jump right in. My finals moment comes from 1996 and I'm calling this video ugly precision. There are a lot of confusing things in basketball. This is not a travel. This is not the same person. And even though this team has played in this particular city for 40 years, network sportscasters paid millions of dollars just to decide that that's not the case. Where did you think Golden State played basketball? In San Francisco. And then there's this. Yes, these two men are fighting over the 1996 championship game ball. Yes, that's Michael Jordan. And yes, that is Randy Brown, the Randy Brown. But this little odd tussle is not why we are here. So let's quantum tunnel bridge gate for a little bit here. Michael Jordan. I can't even put it in words. Finals MVP. But let's tub time machine warp even further ahead to another finals MVP. Iguodala. Because a finals MVP is not a real thing. Well, until it is. In other words, things may be gray in reality, but by force, by posthumous definition, we eliminate that gray and replace it with black and white. It's like the killer instinct or the clutch gene. It's a little thing that we decide after the fact in order to tie a nice bow on whatever narrative we want to present. For example, Andre Iguodala. Andre Iguodala. Iguodala. Andre Iguodala. He won the finals MVP in 2015. Yes, Steph did not have a shiny performance, but even if he's not embarrassing folks, he's still the black hole at the center of the galaxy driving absolutely everything in and out of existence. Steph, I wanna be just like Steph when I grow up. See, cause with Mo, Festus and Justin and a year of plastering strength in numbers across every moment and building, it just felt right to give the MVP to an above average performance, an effort, a symbol. Andre, he was that. But this is not my topic. This is just what I need to set something else up. See, again, the story that year was strength in numbers. They looked and spoke team goals. Even Steph as MVP of the league was just averaging 30 something minutes a game and 20 something points a game. This was a team. And for this six games, team member Andre looked the most teamy. He did splendid. And it also just felt nice and cute, especially when you add this angle in. The Kerr brought him off the bench for the season for the first time in his career. And Andre's response to that idea, well, it better be worth it. It felt poetic. Finals MVP to the sixth man. See, even David Silver himself had to wax poetic on it. And this year's MVP is a player who didn't start in a single game until these finals. Okay, 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 okay. So what did we learn? When the story is told over and over and over again, and we all know the story, it starts to become very hard to alter that story and very easy to bend towards its natural conclusion. And a finals MVP becomes an honorary award, an honorary exercise, and not necessarily a competitive one. For example, as we inch towards my actual moment. 1996, when the Bulls were riding towards their fourth championship and first since MJ's return. It would have taken a pure act of the devil to derail the ascension of a god. It was gonna take a Nick Wright, Chrissy Broussard, full-time type of tantrum effort to give any other player a breathable narrative to compete with Michael Jordan and the inevitable finals MVP trophy. No matter how messy or below average his performance may have been, the prodigal son return home just had to be the story. And it was on Father's Day. An emotional moment. Soon after his own father had been murdered. I know he's watching. To my wife and to my, my kids and to my mother and my brothers and sisters. This is my daddy. But just like the fact that this game ball was being fought over and could have gone a different way, this man right here could have walked away with that trophy because he balled out. 
He put up some of the most beautifully floppy stat lines. He marked this game up in such an ugly precise way. Ugly precision across the whole series. I mean, you never see a player so aloof and carefree and careless happen to be so damn sharp and so aware and in touch and always right there at the cusp of joy. See, emotion was not lost on Dennis. He always let us know what he cared about every step of the way. For example, I wanted this one so bad. So when his focus was all in on this game, you felt his presence in a million tiny ways. Just fucking up opponents' flows. So in the late stages of a relatively tight but assumptively inevitable Bulls closeout over the Seattle Supersonics, Dennis stayed out there, just winning in every possible way. As the Bulls clamped down, the ball kept finding the livest man out there, including this moment right here. Let's watch. How swift, how clean and crisp is this man's stride? And it's different. Look at this, he's on his toes. And for a second to a second and a half, when he's at full speed, it's like watching a running back kick into some unlabeled gear. He's almost floating. And he knows. He hits his spot. He slows down with confidence and then hits a reverse. A reverse? MJ, that reverse, that's stuffed right in the top of his fanny pack. And boy, people have a lot to say about Draymond getting Draymond juiced when he hits a three. single Let's late go. game three. Y'all don't even know, this man celebrated all the time. The celebration. He finishes like a pro in a pro shop, but the celebration is like a fan selected to shoot some goofy shot to win unlimited cheeseburgers. Look, this was a moment. It was contagious. You can even see Scotty getting a little carried away. You can sense the lightness overcoming any tension that the game presented. And then we went to one of the only things even more disrespectfully joyous than any of this. And that's Dennis Rodman at the free throw line. A Dennis Rodman three the old fashioned way, that's rare. And now we have Dennis, a lifetime 58% free throw shooter. But the man shot it like he didn't care. This man shot his free throws like he was thinking about a bus transfer that was about to expire. His mind is, was elsewhere. He's gonna try with his eyes closed now. Probably more concerned with the direction it's gonna careen off the rim, but he hits it. He put in nine points, 19 rebounds, five assists, and he did that all series long. It's a confusing beauty from start to finish. It's a slapdash historic performance that just gets buried with every grainy, overarching summer. See, every championship run, especially these three-peats, they come with stresses, and every stress needs a release valve. And I believe what Dennis did for that second Bulls incarnation was absorb what would have been more detrimental stress. And the fact that he could be the focus for so much attention and scrutiny externally and internally, it let other stuff heal. Traditional team fracturing stuff. Anyway, Dennis was so much to that team, he marked up this series with all his clunky, graceful chaos. And this play right here is full of that. A first-rate, fundamentally flippant, precise, careless, and inconsiderate moment. This man mastered. That is my one final moment. Thank you very much. Please watch some more of the moments. We've got an official playlist here. I'm sure there's some unofficial playlists. If you like this idea, take it, run with it. Let's drop these on the off days of the finals. Let's see how expansive and obscure we can get with these moments. Thank you to everybody that participated, my patrons. I love you. Join the team. Remember Minute, everything evergreen. This is just the beginning.